Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to go to another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. Now, these guys are a very new addition to the Scottish beer scene. They seem to be doing a kind of beer that hasn't really been done by anyone else in the country, actually, and the beers have been getting very good write-ups so far. So I have to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this one has in store for us. We do have another one to look at from these guys a little bit later later on but more than anything else it's really cool to finally get around to introducing these guys to you here on Rampant Lion Reviews so hopefully this is another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so um yeah for this review then we are going to head through to Glasgow once again the Port Dundas area to be specific and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Epocho or Epocho Barrel Fermented Ales to give them their full name maybe we can just call them Epocho Brewery but this particular beer is called Ad infinitum it comes in at 5.5 percent abv and they're describing this one as a scottish pale ale fermented in oak barrels hopped with tetanine so um yeah looks pretty cool as you can see this one is served up in one of these 375 milliliter bottles that you often get the belgian lambic beers in and i think that kind of reflects what they're going for they're going for these sort of old school funky sour beers actually but uh, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then this is one of the first beers that they released actually and you'll see the other one that they released in their first release uh, in a couple of videos time as well but yeah let's crack on with this and see how we go so as always with my reviews i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i'll do in the future from epoch brewery this is the very first time i'm trying one of their beers as i've mentioned to you already but there's all the usual social media down there if you you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the scottish beers that i've reviewed for you and that's being added to very regularly at the moment because i am at home in the motherland of scotland and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about epochal brewery then so epochal brewery as i've mentioned to you already are based in the port dundas area of glasgow and the company was founded in early 2021 by gareth young so Gareth is an academic philosopher specialising in the philosophy of logic and mathematics at Glasgow University and he homebrewed for a long time and was active in a few different homebrewing groups including Milk the Funk and he won the UK National Homebrewing Awards back in 2015 having been the runner-up the year before. But his brewing interest developed to the point where he really wanted to found his own brewery and turn professional and just go for it. But the brewery itself is in an industrial unit and they run a 10 hectolitre brew kit and they do hope to have a tap room at the brewery in time for summer of 2022. A small amount of the beer has already been exported but the exports are going to be very kind of small scale for the foreseeable future and the story of the name Epocho goes as follows and this is a direct quote from Gareth himself basically in the email that he sent back to me. So the story of Epocho, um, initially it came from a story about the actor Klaus Kinski who became furious with a critic who called a performance of his outstanding and extraordinary. He angry, angrily corrected that it was a monumental and epochal performance. So my friends and I used to go around calling things Epocho as a tongue-in-cheek over-the-top term of praise but however it also felt like it fitted with my plans for the brewery in another sense for something to be epochal is for it to define a period of time an epoch so the beer styles I was interested in exploring at the brewery were styles like paleo, porter and so on. These beer styles in their wood-aged funky form defined large periods of brewing history and so are epochal in this sense. My ambition to combine inspiration from the various epochs of brewing, including the current one, gave a further sense of fit for me with the name epochal. So that's why I went for this. So it's basically, um, I guess you could say that epochal is like, you could say it's a it's time defining. It means that yeah, time time defining a, a particular time in history. I guess we could say as well. But as of October twenty twenty one, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced six different beers. They all look relatively similar but they have different coloured labels and I think the one that we're going to review next will be the sort of pinky red one actually. But I'm sure there will be more and more colours uh, come out from this brewery. 
over the next little while and we'll need to see about getting the other ones because I think uh, all six of those have been released in bottles actually. But uh, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Epoco Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. And a special shout out as well to Gareth who actually gave me all that information that I told you in the little brewery history part there. I had to email him because I really couldn't find anything on this brewery actually. But uh, yeah, cool that you took the time to reply. But yeah, as I say, check out all those links in the video description below. But let's have a little look at the beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 5.5% Scottish Paleo fermented in oak barrels and hopped with German Tetnang hops. They come from the Baden-Württemberg region, of course, in the southwest of Germany. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently this one is inspired by the 19th century Scottish Palos, but quite a nice kind of classic label there. It is quite in keeping with the um, the old school sort of Belgian funky beers, if you like. Just a plain silver bottle cap on this one. But uh, yeah, 375 millilitres. I think I paid somewhere in the region like £6.75 for this. Let's just say £7 because it's a bit easier to work off that. So that's maybe about €8. Euros. 80 Swedish kroner, uh, and I guess for those of you over in the States, that's maybe somewhere in the region of $9 American. So uh, yeah, for what it is, I don't think that's too bad when you consider this as a kind of whole barrel-aged, funky, sour type beer. But uh, yeah, 375 milliliters this one, the Ad Infinitum. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Let's just see how it goes. So, there we are. A little bit of smoke on the opening. You can see the carbonation just rushing to the top of the bottle there. But let's get this guy out into the glass and see how we go. It will definitely be cool to visit their tap room in the summer if they've got if they do end up getting that up and running. But I can imagine Gareth is very busy with these activities at Glasgow University. Lecturers always tended to be pretty busy actually researching and managing PhD students and so on. There we are. This looks pretty good actually, I have to say. Yeah, that does look pretty awesome actually. It smells good as well, but we'll get into that in a little minute. Let me just line this up again. So, it actually looks like some of these Keller Lager beers that I've been reviewing um, over the last little while. But anyway, as you can see, this beer has poured a lovely, bright, straw, golden yellow color. Um, remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use, two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do will affect the colour, and any adjuncts that you put in will do it as well. When we're talking about sour beers like this, or, or you know, kind of funky beers, I guess we could say, those uh, factors will play a role. But you can see it poured with about a finger and a half of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. If I bring the glass right up to the camera, you can see the level of froth and things we've got on this but uh, yeah it looks absolutely lovely it's got a little bit of a natural haze to it you can see little bits of kind of sedimentary particles just kind of floating around in it but um, yeah it looks absolutely lovely this one I have to say kind of infitting with what you might expect for a paleo but based on the, the beers I've been having over the last little while it is very akin to some of these you know Keller Lager beers and Keller Pilsners and stuff like that that I've been uh, that I've been coming across. So uh, yeah, I don't think there's too much else we can see about the appearance of this one. I can just let you see some of the kind of sedimentary particles floating around in that. You can see them on that camera. I'm still obsessed with this camera, by the way. It's absolutely lovely. But um, yeah, it looks really really nice. This and the head has just kind of gone down to be about a nice half finger level now. It looks great. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I don't think there's anything else we can really say about the appearance of this beer. So, that does smell really nice actually. Yeah. So, first impression of this one is, yeah, it's actually, it does have a little bit of a kind of resemblance to some of these, um, some of the Lambic beers from the, in a sense, it's, it is like one of these really old school Bel Belgian farmhousey kind of sour type things. Um, but it's, it's a lovely aroma this and as I say there's not really another brewery in Scotland who are doing these type of things at the moment as far as I know. 
there are a few other sour beers, uh, sour breweries, of course. You know, Holy Goat have been doing some, Vault City, uh, Acid House, uh, Fierce, and a few of the others. I think Six Degrees North have also been starting to do some sour beers as well. But these ones are the proper old school Belgian uh, type sour beers, actually. But this does smell very good. So let's just break down this aroma in the way that we always do in the videos. So the backbone of this beer is a mix of, you know, kind of wood like a sort of um spicy sort of woody character like a dry woody note you get a lot of that on this you do get a wee hint of a kind of vanilla quality out of it i'm pretty sure as i said earlier it will be oak that they've aged this in but you certainly get a wee bit of that kind of spicy note out of the oak for sure like a dry spicy thing maybe it's american oak because i always found american oak smells a little bit more kind of spicy than um european oak so remember they're different species of trees of course but um you know you can get a little bit of the vanilla in the wood. You get a little bit of that spicy dryness, as we say. But it's got quite a bit of a kind of grainy, bready backbone, actually, which is what you'd expect. I mean, Scottish kind of golden ales and pale ales and stuff like that always had a kind of brown, bready uh, backbone to them just because of the types of malt and things that we had uh, up here. So that's a kind of interesting point to make about this. The backbone of this one is, as I say, woody you get a bit of smoothness out of the wood right enough but it does get a little bit drier and spicy you can smell a wee bit of um that kind of bread crusty sort of hedgehog roll toasty bread crusty note out of this one a wee bit of a brown wholemeal bread you do get elements of a brighter white bread as well but there's one or two kind of you know jacob's cream crackery sort of notes coming out of this one it's got a little bit of that dry crackery uh type quality to the beer as well so yeah some interesting stuff uh, some really interesting stuff going on in this one, I would say. But on the... Uh, other than that, I don't think there's too much going on in the malt base. There's maybe a teeny little touch of like a slightly biscuity Werther's Original type sweetness out of it, but not much else uh, on the, the sweet side of things. On the hoppy side of the beer, though, um, it's kind of what you'd expect. I mean, the, the Tetnang hop, as we said, this is one of the German noble hops. It usually comes in between like 4 and 5% alpha acid. It's from the Baden-Württemberg region in southwestern Germany. Um, so it'll give you, the German noble hops will always give you quite a smooth earthiness, quite a, pardon me, bright floral aromaticity and grassiness, and you can pick that out of this one right away. So it's got a lovely big kind of bright floral character to it. Um, but yeah, it's some lovely sharp, Kind of, it's at, you can get the sort of, mixing them with the kind of grassy elements that this beer has, you do get a little bit of that kind of funky tartness out of it. So it's got quite a sort of lemon, could you say lemon grassy tartness? It's got a little bit of that coming out of it. So the tartness that you get out of this beer is quite kind of citricky in a sense. So yeah, a little bit of a kind of citricky note coming out of it, a lemony citricky sort of thing. You do get a few little elements of a kind of peary character out of it some um, slightly spicy apple notes or something like this. But yeah, quite a lemony, citricky tartness to it. A wee bit of an oily pear. Maybe a teeny little, tiny hint of gooseberry or something like that. So we wee teeny bit of gooseberry, wee bit of pear. A little bit of a kind of apple character. But then you've got that sort of citricky, grassy tartness coming out of this one. That's where the sort of funky side of this beer is coming in. Just try to think if there's anything else that we really need to say about the aroma of this one in that sense. Overall, I would say that it leans towards a kind of grainy, woody and slightly citricky um, sour beer rather than anything else. But it does remind me of some of the kind of saisons and stuff like this that I've had uh, from some of the Belgian breweries, actually. It really reminds me of those kind of farmhousey beers a little bit. But I guess back in the day, that's, you know, Scottish farmers would have been doing this. Quite a few of the estates and things like this had, uh, you know, stills and... Uh, they were using their grains to make stills and do whiskey and do some of them would be doing beer and things like that as well. Quite a few regions in Scotland were, of course, famous for their, their grains, like the Black Isle and so on. So, uh, yeah, I can see this would be kind of quite interesting because, of course, you would get wild yeast getting into these things and giving you a little bit of funk in them as well. But, um, yeah, interesting stuff for sure. Quite a nice aroma. So if you get the chance to try this one, do take a little bit of time to ponder over that aroma before you get stuck into the beer. But I think we're going to try this one now. Let's do this. So this one is the Ad Infinitum. A uh, 5.5% funky Scottish paleo with German Tetnang hops in it from Epoco Barrel Fermented Ales, or Epoco Breweries, I guess we can call them, in Port Dundas in Glasgow. My first taste of one of their beers. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, cheers. Mm. 
yeah. Now I'm a bit surprised with this actually, because I thought this was going to have a, a real bit of kind of tartness and things to it, but it's really more, it really is like kind of more just smooth and farmhousey, like it's more like that. So yeah, the aroma is giving you a wee bit of tartness, but you don't really get much of that in the flavour. That's interesting. It is more of a kind of bready, woody, seasony type beer, this, than anything else. And we could probably sit and debate the style of this beer for a wee while. But the main question, as I usually say, or always say, should be, is it a good beer? And the answer is yes, this is nice. Um, this is pretty solid, actually. So, yeah, this could, you know, I think this might be the lowest ABV one that they do. Unless they've done another one. Unless one of the very, very new ones is... Um, is lower ABV than this, but this could certainly be a very good sort of sessionable beer for this one. This could be a good sort of core beer. If they're going to have one that's available all the time, this is the sort of beer that um, that could be a good choice. But we'll try the other ones and see, because, you know, maybe they are. The other ones are going to go down the route of being a little bit more kind of sour and things. But yeah, this one really does have that funky uh, farmhousey sort of thing. They, they, You know, these guys, it seems that Gareth likes to call it funky. Um, I would be more inclined to call it farmhouse, but as we say, different people use different terms and things like this. But um, yeah, this is really nice actually, so it gets a thumbs up from me. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again, and if you see it, give it a go. It is actually, it's, it's, it's like a kind of proper old school Saison type beer, this one, but a little bit more hoppy. And with it being a paleo, that's not surprising. So, um... Where do we start with this one? Um, it's one of these beers that is actually quite similar to its aroma, other than the kind of sharp tart thing. So, on the... Um, as we say, on the, the middle, in the middle of your palate, then we'll break this be the beer up as we always do. So middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel that nice kind of woody backbone in there. You can feel that nice kind of smooth oaky sort of thing. The further back on the palate you go, the drier. Uh, the wood gets, but the further forward you come, the smoother it gets. So let's focus on that middle third of the palate just now. So you've got your backbone of that nice kind of oaky, woody sort of thing, a little bit drier towards the back of that middle third and a little bit smoother as you go kind of forward. But towards the front of that middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of a kind of vanilla note coming out of it. So that is quite nice. On top of that, you get a little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing. You get that sort of Slightly toasty, brown bready bread crust. You get that. Then there's some brown bread on top and a wee bit of white bread. And it does, the, you know, the, as the flavour gets kind of taller, it does mellow out a little bit and get slightly sweeter. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on in that middle third of the palate. There's maybe a wee bit of sweetness coming out of it in the dead centre of the palate. Like... A little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. There is a wee bit of that going on in there. But that's, it's not too obvious if that makes sense. But the, that little bit of sweetness you're getting out of the beer is most likely to be the alcohol part of it. And with it being a paleo, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee touch of like biscuit malt or, you know, a bit of, with it being a Scottish paleo, maybe it's got a wee bit of, you know, Maris Otter or something like that in it. But there's many different types of Scottish malts that this could be that will give you a wee bit of a kind of brown sugar but I'm not as well versed in the Scottish malts as I am in the, the European and American ones actually and that's just because the Scottish malts don't usually get used for making beer in, uh, over in Sweden and things but anyway there is a wee bit of sweetness to this beer in the very middle of your palate and it's a wee bit you know it is a wee teeny bit caramel like in the very dead centre of your palate but as you move further out like I say it's a little bit more McVitie's digestive biscuity like rather than anything else so um, yeah that middle third of the palate is um, quite nice in this one. But like I said, it's quite a bready, farmhousey type beer, this one. Let's look at the back third of the palate then. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a bready build-up once again, a bit of a more concentrated bread crusty sort of thing. Then into the back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is distinctly taller. So you've got that more kind of dry, woody base to it. You get a slightly thicker bread crusty component that's a lot more grainy. The brown bready layer is a bit thicker. Then you've got a wee bit of a smooth white bready layer there. And then on top of all of that, you've got the more yeasty 
kind of component to the beer. So you can feel that the yeasty character in this one is a little bit sort of crackery. It's got like a bit of that, you know, dry Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing, a bit of woodiness to it. And just that kind of almost like flowery, bready sort of thing. So you can feel that on the top of that um, back third of your palate. So when you start at the back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is quite tall. But as you come further forward, it just kind of condenses down into the middle third of your palate. It just squashes down a little bit more. And I think that describes the malty and yeasty side of this beer pretty well. Let's look at the hoppy side of things then. Let's do that. So, the malty, uh, sorry, the, the hoppy side of things, brain's not working. Poppy side of things. Back corners of the palate, you do actually get a little bit of uh, earthiness out of this one. And I think the yeast is contributing to that as well. Because normally with German Tetnang hops, the earthiness I think would be a little bit smoother than that if they were just, you know, on their own or being in, used in conjunction with a lager yeast. Because if I was trying this blind, I would guess that it was like, you know, Kent Golding or something like that that was in this one. I would have guessed it was English hops rather than, than German hops. But anyway. There is a wee bit of earthiness there. The earthiness does give you a little bit of bitterness, but as you push further forward, it gets a little bit herbal, and as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, it's got a little bit more of a kind of floral aromaticity to it, which I think works quite well. And it's got a bit of brightness to it there, but round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy, and I would say it's a little bit of a kind of wet, kind of fresh, uh, fresh cut grass that you get out of this one. But um, yeah, it's a nice... Um, it is a nice... Um, beer from the hoppy side of things too but let's focus on that front third of your palate and the kind of fruity funky side of things then so the border region between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of a bready build up there on the on that border region though it's a more of a kind of white uh, sort of bready build up there base of that front third of your palate again you get a bit of the smooth wood you get a bit of the white bread sitting on top of that then you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just uh, kind of roll their way out of the beers um, so yeah, this one is as we would expect there. So at the very back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a slightly dry sultana type thing to this one, you know, the dried white green grapes, um, maybe a little touch of apricot or something like this. But as you come further forward into that front half of the front third of your palate, you get a wee bit of an oily gooseberry, pear sort of thing with this one. I don't get so much of the spicy apple and that sort of you know, lemony, citricky sort of thing that I was picking up in the aroma, that doesn't really show up in the flavour. It is really more a bit of sultana and apricot, dried apricot in the back third, and a more oily, peary, gooseberry sort of thing you get in the uh, the front half of that front third of your palate. So, yeah, it's quite... Um, it is quite a nice beer, this one. As I say, if they could do this on a scale, that it could be a, a sort of core beer for them. I think this would be a really nice introduction to what this brewery is all about. But having said that, this is only the very this is the very first time I'm tasting one of their beers. So there might be something that is a bit more um kind of akin to the image that they want to project, if you like. So that's that's something to think about too. But this is a very nice sessionable summer gold nail, and it shows this this is a side of brewing, these old school sort of saison y type things. Um, I was expecting this to be like you know quite sour actually, um, but this this is you know if you like some of the beers that um, six degrees north do, you will enjoy this one. Although I would say this one is a bit more six degrees north ones are a bit more kind of new school if you like. This one is certainly a bit more of an old school um, sort of saisony type uh, beer. This one saisony farmhouse type beer this so yeah if that's your thing you will enjoy this for sure but let's round off this review with a, a quick look at the mouthfeel then so mouthfeel wise it's um i'd say top end of light bodied carbonation is quite smooth but at the same time you do get a wee bit of crispness out of this beer and i'd say that overall the mouthfeel is is pretty wet but at the same time you get a good little bit of dryness from this beer particularly in the aftertaste it's the woodiness and some of the graininess and sort of farmhousey character that really lingers into the aftertaste with this beer if we're talking ibus i wouldn't be surprised if this one is maybe about maybe about 40 uh it could be th somewhere between 30 and 40 i think some of the dryness that this beer has from the grainy woody side of things it's a bit difficult to distinguish that from 
out and out hoppy bitterness because the earthy character which comes from both the hops and the yeast is also playing a role in this so yeah i think it goes together quite interesting in this one but i would say it's got the, the sort of dryness if you combine all of that together it's almost like it's got a bitterness that's equivalent to about 40 ibus but the malty backbone of this one as i said it's it's quite smooth for sure and um, but you get a good bit of graininess and dryness out of it, a little degree of sweetness as well some nice um a nice and you know it's also got a nice just little oily wet fruity character to it which i uh, really quite enjoy so on that side of things the fruits are a little bit dry they're a little bit oily as well but i think it um it does work um it does work quite nicely so yeah i think we can leave it at that for the the tasting side of things but overall i i really enjoyed this beer it's something a wee bit different and it's cool to see this coming from a a Scottish brewery, like a proper old school Belgian farmhouse saison type thing. It really is like that. If I was tasting it blind, it tasting it blind, that's what I would say it was. I would think this is a some sort of Belgian style saison or whatever. I wouldn't really pick. I don't think I'd pick this one out as a a paleo. Um, I don't think I'd even think to say it's a. You could say it's a Belgian paleo, but um, yeah, I don't think I would even think to pick it to pick it out as that. I would probably think this was Belgian brewed. And it was a sort of uh, some kind of saison or something like this, but uh, yeah, I think Epochal have done a a solid, solid job of this one. And it is, as they say, another aspect of brewing that's that hasn't really been covered in the Scottish beer scene. So they've got a little niche in the market, I would say, because Vault City are doing the more kind of modern, big fruity sours. It looks like Acid House are going to do the same kind of thing as that, and uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think who else. You know, Holy Goat, of course, will probably follow suit uh, with. Uh, what Vault City have done. But uh, yeah, this has been pretty cool, I have to say. So we can round off this review there. This one is the Ad Infinitum, a 5.5% kind of funky paleo, I guess we could say, almost like a saison, to be honest with you, from Epochal Barrel Fermented Ales in the Port Dundas area of Glasgow. This is definitely worth trying if you get the chance. It's a really nice beer and very different from a lot of the other stuff that you're going to find in the Scottish beer scene at the moment. So yeah, I look forward to my next review from these guys. I can't remember what the name of the beer is, but it is the pink one. So keep your eyes peeled for that in a few videos time. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from Epochal Brewery as well. And we will return to these guys very, very soon. This is the Ad Infinitum, a 5.5% Scottish paleo with German Tettenheim hops, barrel aged. Uh, from Epochal Brewery in Port Dundas in Glasgow. Slanjit, Skull, cheers, and see you guys on the next review.